Uh, hi, everybody. You're probably wondering how I got obsessed with girls and computers. I'm not a coder. Uh, I'm a lawyer. My father's here. He can attest to the fact that I was definitely not a science or math superstar. But I am a policy junkie. And it was clear to me that we have a huge domestic problem. We have 1.4 million jobs that are open in the computing-related fields. Less than one-third of our workforce are prepared for those jobs, and less than 20% of them will be filled by women. Only nine out of 10 high schools teach computer science. Only 4,000 kids took the AP computer science exam, of which less, less than 500 were girls. And you compare that to China, where 40% of their kids know how to code. What is going on? especially when it comes to our girls. Less than 0.2% of high school girls say that they're interested in computer science, even though girls are more digitally engaged than boys are at a younger age. They're better at math and science. But something happens around seventh or eighth grade, and all of a sudden, they wear their dislike of math and science as a badge of honor. I can walk into a Forever 21 and buy a t-shirt that says, math sucks. I don't see any role models that look like me. You cannot be what you cannot see. So I wanted to experiment. And I started a program called Girls Who Code. And I took 20 girls, and I put them in a technology company. And I taught them how to build websites, how to build mobile apps. And I went out there to company after company and I asked them to help me in this endeavor. I met Beth Comstock, and I said, I want to teach little girls how to code. Will you help me? And she said, I will. I met Rochelle Parham, the CMO of eBay, and I said, I want to teach little girls how to code. Will you help me? She said, I will. I bugged the CEO of Twitter, Dick Costello, and I said, I want to teach young girls how to code because the innovation of our country depends on it. Will you help me? And he said, I will when it was just an idea in my head. And so in the summer of 2012, we took 20 girls, and we taught them how to computer program. And within eight weeks, they had surpassed any expectation that I had. Kadi, 16, came here from Senegal two years ago. I had to teach her how to use a mouse the first day. Eight weeks later, she had built a website to teach computer science in 32 different languages. Cora, father, diagnosed with cancer when she was five years old, and she decided right then that she wanted to be a doctor because she wanted to save her daddy's life. And she didn't understand how technology could help her do that until Girls Who Code. In the last, by the end of the eight weeks of our program, she had built an algorithm to help detect whether a cancer is benign or malignant. She is 16 years old. Julia goes to school every day hungry. And every day she'd come back and she'd do her homework, and her dad would say, Julia, what are you working on? And she'd say, Daddy, I'm learning how to, I'm learning how to code. And she, he said, will you teach me? She started teaching her father how to computer program. He was a substitute custodian making maybe $30,000 a year trying to feed a family of five. He is now on his way to making $83,000 a year as a website programmer because his young 16-year-old daughter taught him how to computer program. When I started Girls Who Code, people taught me, you can't teach girls how to computer program. They're not smart enough. They don't have what it takes. And we proved them wrong. But we also proved that there were certain essential things that we had to do. In our eight-week program, we took the girls to Twitter and eBay and Facebook so they could go to field trips and understand that technology isn't just a guy typing at a computer. They met female role models like, and, and, and showed them the things that they had built and understood that technology played a role, whether you want to be Beyonce or Hillary Clinton. It's a skill set you need to have. We went from 20 girls in 2012 to 152 girls this summer in New York, Detroit, San Francisco. We're launching Girls Who Code clubs all across this country because my mission, I have a small one, it's to teach a million girls how to computer program by 2020 and to build the 21st century Girl Scouts because our nation 
is depending on it. But in this mission that we have, we also need some more disruption. And that's what I want to kind of talk about at the, at, as we approach the end of my talk. You know, the problem is, is one of the things that Beth talked about earlier, it's there's not enough girls that are raising their hand and saying, I want to learn how to computer program. Even though Girls Who Code was in New York Times, Washington Post, Glamour, every magazine you could think of, when we had our application process the next year, we didn't get 20,000 girls to apply because they still don't think that it's cool. And so we need help really thinking about how do you make the prom queen at Schomburg High School, which is where I went to high school, who's someone who wants to be a lawyer, how do we convince her that she needs to learn how to code? How do we show her that is, it's not only cool, but it's a necessary skill set for her to have? And culture is going to play a big role on that. What was really interesting was, <coughs> I'm sorry, in our applications, a lot of the girls, they wanted to be forensic scientists because of CSI or they wanted to be doctors because of Grey's Anatomy, or they wanted to be lawyers because of Allie McBeal. The role that Hollywood and television has played, again, in showing girls that you can be what you can see has really shaped that. And I, I have a call to action to every, anybody who is in a media and entertainment to start changing what those role models look like. Secondly, we have a major technology divide in our country. Not everybody has the opportunities to put apart, take apart computers when they're seven years old. Many of our young people still don't have computers at home. In our first year at Girls Who Code, I had to send half my girls home with a computer. In New York City, where I live, half of our young people live under the poverty line. The majority of our schools don't have computer labs, don't have Wi-Fi, don't have DSL. 30% of kids in the school that I sit on the board of, of, of the Academy of Computer Science, they, I can't even give them a computer to take home with because it will get stolen on their, way to, on their way home. And so there's a massive, massive, massive hardware issue that we have to solve because we cannot reach 8 million girls unless they have a computer to actually learn on. And that's something that we need to change. You know, finally, there's a real policy conversation that needs to be had in our city. 36 states don't offer computer science education. Compare that to what's happening in China, India, Vietnam. We are, the, we are falling behind this really, really, really important issue. And so I ask all of you as entrepreneurs, as innovators, as disruptors to get engaged in this political conversation to make sure that we're telling people technology is not only cool, but it is necessary for our nation because every day that goes by, we are being left behind. And so my time is now up, but I have one favor to ask you. I need you to encourage every single young woman in your life. I need you to tell her that she's got to learn how to code. Whatever she wants to do in her life, we need to make sure that our young girls still don't have the short end of the stick and we empower them to be everything that they can be. Thank you.